Church School Committee as well as parents to make sure that they take a look at some of the, um, the, the work that classes have been working on. Some are classroom projects, others are classroom books or individual projects also. In the packet that we prepared tonight for the, um, for the school committee members, uh, we wanted to give you a smattering of the types of things we, we do. And so you'll find a fantastic uh, math magazine created by Mrs. Badavis' fifth grade classes. You'll find an invitation to the PTO auction April 4th. It's going to be fantastic. You'll see examples of the PTO, and uh, the uh, a listing of the PTO enrichment programs that are provided for the children, in which they will, uh, the PTO will describe those in depth later on, going as quickly as I can. <laughs> um, also a list of the PTO fundraisers, and it is very impressive, all the work that this group of people do, and also all the parents' support to do all the special programs that we're able to offer the boys and girls here. There's a sample uh, no, um, notice from the health room, a sample newsletter of, of my own, um, the match calendar, uh, sample PTO newsletter, and all these newsletters, by the way, thanks to the PTO, I now have, have gone electronic, and all of it, I think uh, a couple dozen people have access to email, and we do have hard copies that we try to um, rewrite names on them and send them home with those children. So we are doing our share to go green. Um, Enrichment Express, there's a page in there that shows the participation for the fall session and the winter session. I think we had over 105 boys and girls participate, and those courses are offered by staff here at the little school, and again, Muffin Man is one of those. Um, there are samples in here of, there's a, a thank you letter from Coats for Kids. That was one of our, one of our many projects uh, that is part of our school, co uh, school goal in which we um, want children to be involved in some service projects, and we keep this as a school goal every year. And uh, that the committee finds very great ways to, whether it's Valentine's for veterans, folks, for kids, um, for children to become involved, involved and do for others. We have been able to, um, uh, th there is information on the MCAS uh, tests that are coming up and also MCAS remediation courses that we're able to offer as a result of the funding that we get from our, our courses that we offer in Richmond. I thank you a lot of appreciation um, for the National Assessment of Educational Progress recently. Our school was selected to have fourth grades tested and this will come out as a nation's report card. No individual scores or school scores will be reported but uh, they will be, when they talk about fourth grades across the country, your child, if they were in the fourth grade, was sampled. Um, also, last, uh, last week, uh, for the very first time, we had our family fitness night, and that was run by um, our school, our school goal committee, um, Mrs. Levin and Mr. O'Neill and others, and it was a wonderful opportunity. I think there were over 150 so participants in that night. So that was, uh, a different type of activity that, that people chose to come in and participate in. Um, and there, there's also a sample of winter poetry by Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bradley's second grade class. And you know, as I was putting this together and I was reading, I was looking for this, I said, I have to read this one poem. Spring Bears. And this, this was a technology project as well as a writing project. The boys and girls typed this in a computer class and then illustrated God knows, I don't know how it's done. But um, with the computer, okay, it wasn't just a drawing. Spring bears, bears sleeping in the snowy moonlight. They doze all day. They doze all night. Bears, bears come out of there. The snow is melting everywhere. I see you creeping out of bed. You're no longer dreaming in your head. In your great spring mood, you go looking for food. Cubs will follow you when spring burns spring. And that was Gabrielle Bacher, second grade. Mm -hmm.
and this is Veneziano, and this is Tom Josie. Okay. You got us all. Good evening, Dr. Jarvis, Webster, and all members of the school day. Welcome to the PTO, wants to welcome you to our fantastic school. We are all so proud of this school. The purpose of the PTO at the Little School is to provide funding and programs that benefit all children. This year, the PTO has set several fundraisers to increase the funds needed to do these programs. Some of these events were family dues. This year, PTO gave out Little School bumper stickers families that paid the annual dues. These stickers were generously, donate, generously donated by a little school family. Our annual holiday concert this year, a family donated a basket of elves to be raffled off. We sold school apparel this fall, and we'll do it again this spring. Sally Foster wrapping paper was done this year. Had a bake sale at a holiday concert, and our annual calendar raffle in January. Our school also has involved in collections of box tops and other recycled items. The PTO board created a motto this year, Catch a Rising Star. The stars are our students here at the Little School. Our mission this year is to raise funds to help our Little School stars shine even brighter. An evening among the stars is our major fundraiser this year, which is to be our auction on April 4th at the Hillview Country Club. We are very fortunate to have Billy Cost from KISS 108 here in MC for that evening. Last year, the PTO purchased three smart boards, and in this year, we have just purchased an additional smart board. Presently, all fifth grade classrooms have smart boards. The other board is being used in a fourth grade science class. We also were able to purchase a computer for the half-day kindergarten classroom. Another purchase will be a camcorder. Last year, we purchased two digital camera packages for the school, and we've just purchased an additional package for the kindergarten classroom. Now, all the teachers will be able to capture special memories of the little school stars. We have, at the little, we also have established a little school link, like Mr. Lucisa said. It allows us to email our monthly newsletter and announcements and other important updates so parents can keep, keep in touch and know what's going on. This has been a tremendous savings to PTO. PTO has had a very successful year with fundraising. It is all due to the extremely supportive and dedicated families that attend the little school. Without that continuous support, we would not be able to offer our children the amazing events that enrichment is able to bring to our school. Mary Ann Veneziano and her team, has, who cheered this team this year, did an outstanding job, and we are all so pleased and so happy that she has done such a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a moment. Here, Ian Veneziano. Welcome, everybody, Dr. Chapman, school committee members. Um, when I was asked to give a few comments about the enrichment programs here at the little school, I decided the best way to do that would be to interview a few little school students. And luckily, I live with two of them. Uh, when I asked my second grader about some memories of enrichment programs here at the little school, he said, well, they're good. When asked to give more detail, he's a boy, don't forget, he said, well, they're very good. <laughs> I reminded him that he had seen rainforest creatures, he had seen authors, musicians, all sorts of wonderful performances here at the school, and he decided, I liked petting the crocodile a lot. My fifth grader, mercifully, is a girl and has a lot to say about everything. Uh, she told me and reminisced about her six years at the little school and the many cultural enrichment programs that she had been fortunate enough to participate in. Some of her favorites were this year the children's author, Jerry Pilato, who visited the school, and she was fortunate enough to have lunch with him, eat a slice of pizza with a real live author, and get to ask questions about what it would be like to be an author when she grows up. She said to me, Mom, when you just read about something in a book, it's not nearly as exciting as when you have a hands-on or interactive opportunity. I thought that really represented the way our children here at the little school feel about the cultural enrichment programs that we're lucky enough to provide. We're lucky to have the support of Mr. Lasis to bring opportunities to our students here, speakers, artists, performers, and different educators who supplement and complement the classroom work that goes on every day here at the little school. It's really a collaboration with our classroom teachers to find out what type of activities they would like us to bring in to enhance what they're already doing and all the good work here at the school. Uh, for example, today, we had a hands-on geography program, as Leah announced, where a 40-foot by 20-foot giant map of the world was placed in the middle of our gymnasium, and our second grade students stood barefoot on it and showed the educator where the different continents, oceans, rivers, and mountain ranges were and I learned quite a few things that I had forgotten in second grade. 
this year we'll bring 15 different arts and enrichment programs to the school, ranging from health and fitness related topics to African drumming, music, arts, science, and technology. And let's face it, in today's tough economic climate, a lot of the extras aren't going to survive in our school budgets. So PTO, through parent participation and through the support of Mr. Lassis, is fortunate enough to be able to provide some of those enhanced learning experiences for our kids and help build some lifelong memories. So thank you, and Marina Chamantosi. Good evening, Dr. Chowden, school committee members, all the parents and staff who are here. When Sue was talking about all the fundraising that we do here, for the past two years, the Little School PTO has um, benchmarked a new and creative fundraising, which is Teamwork Trivia Night. And um, I know Dr. Trouting has attended, but you need to get your tickets early because we sold 250 tickets in four days. So we decided, since many of you have not had this great opportunity to attend, that we would do Teamwork Trivia Night this evening. So on the bottom, below your folders, there is an answer sheet that says School Committee Trivia, and we're going to have a little fun. No answers on my sheet. Dr. Trotter will have everything. His team scores very well. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's only going to be six questions compared to 60 because time is an issue. Um, so if you can write down your answers and then we'll go back and quickly review how well you did. We have a pen at each one of the stations as well. Question number one. What actress scored a record 12 Oscar nominations, winning first for the year 1933 and last for 1981? Please no cheating, no blackberries, no phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a team, but this is individual, sorry. <laughs> Question number two. What Civil War general graduated first in the West Point class of 1829? <laughs> 1829. <laughs> Question number three. What do you have to be in the NBA to win the Eddie Gottlieb Trophy? As you can see, we have lots of fun at this fundraiser. Question number four. How many stars are there in the Big Dipper? <laughs> Question number five. What's the only Central American country without a coastline on the Caribbean? <laughs> and the last question is, who was E at the Little? <laughs> Okay, you, you don't have an explicit splash on the paper. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and here are the answers. Question one, what actress scored a record 12 Oscar nominations, winning first for the year 1933 and last for 1981? Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> Question number two, what Civil War general graduated first in the West Point class of 1829? Robert E. Lee. Yeah. Question number three. What do you have to be in the NBA to win the Eddie Godley Trophy? Good at basketball. Rookie Good. of the year. <laughs> How many stars are there in the Big Dipper? Seven. Three the candle and four form the bowl. The only Central American country without a coastline on the Caribbean, El Salvador. And the last one is who was E. Ethel Little? She was a little fan. She was a sign of giant The first school that E. Ethel Little School was named after. And she was a school committee member. Wow. Yeah.
So we hope you can join us next November 4th at 7 o'clock.